What's going on guys? My name is Elmer or Yatu Chavez. Hope you guys are doing well. And with the Easter egg of Dorizon Draga finally being completed, we finally get a lot of questions that we've had in the past zombies maps, at least for Black Ops 3, answered. So the first map that I want to walk through is Shadows of Evil, because in Black Ops 3, this is the map where it all started. The giant was just a DLC map, but if you think about it, this map came first, and I'm here to explain why. But first, I want to go through a few things, since we now have a lot of information, especially regarding the summoning key and what its powers and abilities are. So the first thing that I want to go over is the powers of the summoning key. Now, if you haven't watched the cutscene for Horizon Drop, once you complete the Easter egg, Rick Toppin explains what the summoning, what one of the powers, I'm sorry, of the summoning key is. And if you guys don't know, I'll play the audio clip right now for you guys, so you guys have a better understanding of it. After another, I should never have trusted you, Rick Toffin. Never. You should trust me, Dempsey. You all should. This artifact has the power to contain and preserve the subject's soul, your soul. So now that we know what one of the powers of the summoning key is, which is preserving souls, it really sheds a lot of light on what we've been doing for Shadows of Evil. If you guys remember, in order to open the Pack a Punch, we would need to go to all the ritual sites and, uh, you know, fight off the gatekeepers until the gateworm appeared. We would place the summoning key on the table, and someone, we are still not 100% sure who those people were, would be on top of it and be used as a sacrifice. Now, when they blew up and they would be, a, and, you know, put in the summoning key, it looked like they were dead. And, to a certain extent, they were, but their souls were preserved. And this would be continuing happening for at least three or four times until we could open up the Pack-a-Punch. And then, at the end of the cutscene, or at the end of the Easter egg, once we complete it all, Rick Toffin comes in and jacks the summoning key from us. Doesn't really explain much about it, so by the time that we finished the Shadows of Evil Easter egg, we didn't know what was going on. But now that the Rise and Draka has come, we have a better understanding of what's been going on and what Rick Toffin has been doing with the summoning key and his powers. If it still doesn't make much sense to you, think of it this way. Shadows of Evil came first then the giant, and then now the Rizendrak. Why do I say that way? Why is, why is it not some sort of other order? Well, I'm basing it on when he got the summoning key. We could not do any other, well, theoretically speaking, we could not have done any other Easter egg from this point forward without the summoning key. So, I'm sure we could have played it, but it wouldn't make much sense because if you didn't do the Shadows of Evil Easter egg and you jump straight into the Rizendrak, you're going to be wondering where did he get the summoning key from? What is that thing? But, if you have done it, it makes sense, because once we do this easter egg in Shadows of Evil, he jacks our summoning key, doesn't really explain much about it, and then he goes into a teleporter, or into a portal, and then pops out in the giant. Now, in the giant, there were some more questions. So very briefly, I want to talk about what he was doing in the giant. In the cutscene, very briefly, you can see that Rick Toffin, after he kills himself, kneels down towards the other one, and we can't really see what he was doing. Everyone, even the gang, was wondering what he was doing, why he was kneeling down towards his body. But now that we know that he was doing the same thing that he was doing for Dempsey, he kills him and then preserves his soul in the summoning key. So now that we have two of our original characters, or at least two of our characters, souls in the summoning key, we only need two more, which is Takeo and Nikolai, to be preserved in the summoning key, which obviously would mean that we would need to move on to DLC 3, I'm sorry, DLC 2 and 3. And of course, 4, a lot of people are saying it's just sort of a big finale of it all. By the time we get DLC 3, all four souls would be in the summoning key, and then DLC 4 would just be sort of the ending of it all. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to be saying, oh, that the ending is, you know, it's the zombies storyline, or the zombies are never going to end, or the zombies are finally going to be over with, whatever, it's going to be the end of zombies one way or another. But that's too far forward to, to say what's going to be happening. So we're just going to leave it off at here for right now. Hopefully with the next DLC, we'll get a lot more uh, information coming our way. Uh, leave your questions in the comments down below because like I said, in the, uh, in the next DLC, someone else has to go. So leave your theories, your questions, and your comments down below on who do you think is going to die next. It's a 50-50 shot at this point. Either it's Takeo or Nikolai. So go ahead, leave your thoughts and opinions down below. If you have any more zombies questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. If you guys like this video, hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you guys want to see more zombies content. My name is Yatu Chavez and I'm out. Peace.